I'm Pat Gunn, and these are my thoughts uh, uh, for the closing of the year 2017. Ordinarily, I would probably be making this on New Year's Eve, but given that I'm going to be traveling, I think it probably makes sense to do it from home, where I actually have the equipment to do this reasonably. Um, it might be interesting to try uh, try doing recordings from my uh, from my Chromebook Pixel. I'm not sure if the camera's up to snuff, but I guess I could probably attach a USB camera and just bring my mic uh, with me when I'm going to be doing that. So I'm going to be spending <clears throat> New Year's Eve in Pittsburgh, which is, I think I spent last year there as well. Uh, Pittsburgh, they just have a nice cultural fest uh, going on called First Night at the close of every year, where they open up downtown, uh, local uh, local group called Pittsburgh Filmmakers. They do a kind of a film festival. Uh, stores will open uh, open again uh, for the evening, typically like at 6 p.m. until maybe 1 a.m. There's high sculpting. There's a parade. It's, it's kind of fun. And I've spent some of these years in New York City where I live now. Or I mean, I've spent some of the turning of the years in New York City, but uh, I've never done the Manhattan thing because it's supposed to be pretty miserable. I've been on the uh, on the Brooklyn Bridge and a whole bunch of people do that. They just crowd onto the walkway and watch the fireworks from there and that's nice although you get kind of cold and you can't really move. Just basically if you feel like standing up for three hours on a bridge uh, it's it's a nice experience. Um, might not sound like it by that description but it actually is. Um, another option is to go to Prospect Park in Brooklyn where they hold a, another thing of fireworks and there's some lo uh, food and local music and stuff. And I enjoyed doing that as well. But Pittsburgh, it's a city that I have a particular affection for. I don't often travel there anymore, although I spent 10 years living there in the past. So it's, it's nice to get back there. And first night, it's just, uh, I think I just, I enjoy it more than I enjoy the options in New York City. Uh, it is a big fuss, though, and I, I don't know if I'll always do it. Maybe I'll just rotate between these for as long as I'm in, uh, for as long as I live in New York City. I'm still enjoying living in New York. I wasn't sure whether I would or not when I first moved here from Philadelphia. But as I've probably mentioned before in videos, when you grow up not on the West Coast or on the East Coast, you always kind of look towards... Uh, the idea of living in one of those places for a few years while you're growing up. And New York was closer, and I've come to really dislike California culture, so I ended up here, and I'm, I'm liking it so far. It's nice to be in a city that, that it's still a city that kind of goes to sleep at night, but not everything closes. The public transit stays open. There's still opportunities for food good place for a walk. There's a variety of activities you can do at any time at night. And the level of infrastructure here really is nice. And I know that sounds a little bit weird to get like so solidly recommend infrastructure as a reason to live in a particular city, but it honestly, it's a big deal. Uh, it means that I don't have to have a car and I'm not particularly disadvantaged for not having a car. It means that there's generally no question as to whether I can uh, I can do something uh, or at least of all the places in the world New York is generally one of the places that's the most likely to have anything that I could imagine um, except for maybe nature but even that isn't too terrible we have some nice parks um, am I doing this here uh, physically I'm still suffering a lot of migraines maybe even little bit more than in uh, previous years. They're not really getting less frequent. They're probably getting a little bit more frequent. But I've just kind of accepted that as a lifelong thing. My heart condition has not acted up very much this year. It's hard to even remember even one of the brief times that it's done. I'm sure it's done it maybe once or twice this year, but by and large, I think that's in remission. And I think it, it's supposed to be. Uh, my eyesight seems to be roughly staying the same, maybe slowly getting worse, but it's not really noticeable. Uh, I would be wearing my glasses right now, but produces a, a too much glare with the angle that the webcam is in and the ambient 
uh, light in my apartment. Um, hearing, I might be losing a little bit of hearing. Uh, but in general, my, my health is decent. It's, uh, I haven't gotten sick a lot. When I have, it's generally been migraines. Um, my apartment, I'm not really liking it too much. I'm probably going to get a new place uh, in about six months when my current lease expires. It's just, it's too small. The, the floors are not flat, and so things roll. And, uh, well, I just think the smallness is probably the, the biggest barrier. I'm going to see if I can get a, a better deal somewhere in Manhattan, ideally still within walking distance of where I work. Um, so I changed jobs this year. Uh, I spent about roughly two years at Dropbox. Um, I left it in September, I think. Um, that was for a number of reasons. Uh, I was getting kind of bored. I was hoping to get out of site reliability engineering and, and into regular software engineering. Um, just because, although I think I'm quite good at it, it's also kind of soul-sucking and a little bit boring. Uh, basically a high responsibility, low interestingness job. And uh, also I, I was a little bit tired of being the one to say no to other developers and site reliability engineers need to do that a lot. Like they're the people with the systems experience who understand what happens if you code things in a certain way. But generally that's not something that the people you say no to will understand and appreciate. And there was also a certain amount of dysfunction on my team. And uh, it was stuff that was uh, relating to management and it was really pretty irritating to me and it just meant that although I probably could have stayed there uh, considerably longer uh, I I don't think I would have been very fulfilled so I left I moved to a research foundation and I'm doing neuroscience research and uh, that is pretty awesome it's nice to be back in academia it's nice to be looking at things that nobody understands uh, it's it's nice to be developing new stuff. There is a there's a lot of adjustment that I needed to make, and that I needed to get used to being in a kind of permanent prototyping mode. Whereas when you're an SRE, generally you're looking at code and thinking like, how can we build this for the ages? How can we bring in all the concerns that are going to hit us when this thing is going to be running uh, at large scale for a long time? But in the sciences, often you're focusing on exactly the opposite. How can I build this fast to get through a time-limited use, after which it'll be probably discarded? Um, and that's nice. It's very different. Uh, it's really enjoyable. Um, I really am liking the change of pace. There is a certain amount of loss of status, but I guess I've often found that site reliabil uh, reliability engineers, the status is mostly in their head and that they, except around other SREs, they often don't get that kind of status or at least it's not a particularly visible thing and they often end up losing out in most of the discussions on how to do things. They're, the intuitions that they spend a long time building, they often are just discarded. And so not being responsible for beating your head against a wall in a lot of ways is is pretty nice. Um, I'm I like my coworkers. Sometimes there, there's a little bit of a challenge in academic environments with uh, get, getting along with people who are just very shy or awkward or things like that. It happens a lot more in academia than it happens in industry. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's to stay selection bias in terms of who tends to go down what career path. And there's a certain amount of that here, but it doesn't really bug me too much. Um, and I guess just I, I hope to ride this unicorn for as long as I can. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to uh, stay here. I'm, I'm, imag I'm hoping for pretty long term, like it would be nice to stay here for as long as I'm in New York City and for that to be several years. And eventually maybe I'll leave for... Uh, for another city and then I would have to give it up then but just I think this has the potential to be very comfortable and very 
intellectually enriching. And those are things that I, I care a lot about, like being able to be curious about something and just chase it as far as it should be chased and uh, not be shackled by concerns that distract me from, uh, from that kind of thing. Uh, and just longer term, maybe I'll move back to Pittsburgh or maybe I'll move to Boston, go back into, uh, go back and work for a university. But for now, I'm going to just uh, hopefully stay here for a long time. And, uh, and yeah, like I, I um, let's see, in terms of coding, I'm, uh, and I, I guess this is really better to talk about in terms of social stuff. I've become a little little bit more disillusioned with Google+, Plus, just in terms of the shrinking audience. Uh, and I know that it's a weird response to it, but I'm probably going to go back to traditional blogging. I still might occasionally, uh, I'll still probably see uh, post things on Google+, Plus, but it'll be more of a peripheral thing. Um, with blogging, I kind of tend to ramble about whatever pops into my head, and I feel a lot more freedom to do whatever format I like. And to uh, d just Google Plus, because you really only have one highlighted link, you tend to write about one thing. And there's kind of a social pressure uh, that comes from the technical decision there. And that's fine for what it is, just in the same sense that Twitter has technical pressures that pushes you to think about what a tweet should have. But um, I imagine Google Plus is, uh, when I first hopped onto it, is being useful for being a little bit more of a broad audience, and that's why I did it. Uh, and now that, that uh, the rationale for that is disappearing, it probably just makes sense to respond to that lack of pressure by going back to what I would consider my most useful form of social media, which is significantly just about doing things for myself and letting other people see if they take the effort to see them. And if they don't, then that's fine, because I still have the record of my own expression, which I can look back on over the years um, and use it as a springboard for further reflection. And if other people do want to see it, then that's nice, too. I guess the other thing is one of the people I worked with at, Dro uh, at Dropbox, he had a um, he has a website uh, and he does reviews of a lot of things. And I'm thinking it would be nice to go back and do reviews. I used to use my blog uh, for that. I don't think I'm going to do it in the future. I'm more likely to do it as a uh, as a dedicated site with categories and stuff like that. Um, and so I, uh, I would like to build the technical infrastructure to nicely have posts for that. And so the next generation of my blog, which is a lot simpler as a blog, but we'll have this added review functionality. Uh, it'll take care of that need for me. And I'll probably stick reviews of books and all sorts of things up on there. Um, I might I might try and use YouTube a little bit more this coming year. I'm not sure. I uh, might try and put some more of my teaching content up there, particularly because I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, keep running classes. It always was kind of exhausting when I did it. And just the effort to recruit new students and deal with the overhead was a little bit much. Um, and also there's the possibility of just doing this stuff at work, which eliminates a lot of the concerns. Uh, it does eliminate some of the niceness of just reaching out to random people, particularly at the start of their careers. But at the same time, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll see how it goes. Um, maybe I will run some more classes, but maybe just trying to do more of this stuff online uh, would be reasonable and just do it for a broad theoretical audience rather than a specific audience that's sitting in front of me. Um, so maybe zoom, uh, zooming a little bit out. Uh, let's see, game-wise, it's been a good year. I've enjoyed a lot of video games. Uh, found a few that for one reason or another I skipped out on previous years. I've also been playing a little bit of KOL this year, which I haven't for several years. Um, not sure if I'm going to stick with that. Uh, the The routine of, of doing that every evening is kind of nice. It's a little bit social. 
uh, in the sense that there's a chat bar on the side and people sometimes chat about various things. But um, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if it's really enough socially. Um, OkCupid was a much more theoretical social environment in that it almost never resulted in my actually going out and grabbing tea or food with anybody. But it kind of gave me a steady stream of like the possibility that I could. But with recent recent changes to the way that they run things, it's a lot less useful for that, and that it doesn't uh, it no longer lets people know that you sent them a message. They kind of have to discover it by doing a, a search for profiles, and that just it disincentivizes sending uh, a note to somebody. I mean, it was always a little bit difficult for me being shy to like go through the like convince myself to send somebody a note, but now given that there's an even lower chance that they're going to see it, it just doesn't seem worthwhile using the site anymore. So I uh, deactivated my account. I've kind of kept an eye on whether they're going to reverse that decision or not, but I don't expect them to. And it, uh, but it just means that they've made their service useless to me. Um, uh, I'm probably going to try and use Meetup a little bit more this coming uh, year to make up for it. Um, I don't know. Uh, I probably should find a way to do more outgoing things. Uh, it's always hard, again, when you're kind of shy to convince yourself to do these things and actually find the right things to do. But I don't know, the, the years of, of mostly solitude, they eventually, the weight of that tends to get, uh, tends to bear down on you a little bit more as time goes on. Um, yeah, and so I, I guess both of my cats, uh, Beeflo and Tortfeaser, they're still with me. They're getting quite old at this point. Tortfeaser's gotten pretty skinny, uh, and I've been trying to beef him up by, uh, or to bulk him up. Uh, and so I've been trying to feed him separated from Beeflo just so that she doesn't uh, end up bullying him away from the food. Um, uh, I'm. I guess I. Uh, he. I've also been taking both of them to to checkups more regularly to see if there's stuff that I'm missing that might be helpful for them in, uh, in their age. Hopefully, uh, they'll still be with me next year. But you never really know with uh, old pets. Um, but they've been my constant companions for a pretty long time now, and uh, I'd, I'd like for that to continue. Obviously. Um, so personal life, uh, not, not, I haven't traveled too much, uh, this year. Took a trip when I was still at Dropbox, uh, maybe near the middle of the year. One of my cats is trying to get into the trash. Um, took a trip to San Francisco, uh, which was kind of nice. It's good to see people at work that I hadn't seen for a while. Of course, now I've left the company. But I guess I kind of knew that it was I was likely leaving when I took the trip out there, so uh, so it was kind of a good goodbye trip. I, I my uh, nobody really knew for sure, uh, right? I don't think anybody knew that it was apart from me. But yeah, it was it was a nice uh, nice visit. Um, I guess though, just the that such a long trip to San Francisco that uh, that ends up being kind of ridiculous. I, uh, otherwise, I took a trip, uh, I took another much shorter trip out there to interview at Facebook, which is interesting and maybe a little bit creepy. Their kind of gated village feel of their headquarters is bizarre. It may be nice, but, but bizarre. Um, so that's most of the travel that I did. I uh, there oh there was also the trip to Dragon Con, which was kind of near the end of last year, uh, or, or I mean this year. Uh, it was actually um, at the very tail end of this job, or, or of the last job rather, and I decided to take a sleeper car uh, down to Atlanta, which was awesome, and I'm going to do that again uh, this coming year. Sleeper cars on Amtrak are much more comfortable than flying. They're they're slow. But it's just nice and relaxing, gives you a chance to read, it's soothing, uh, and yeah, 
I, I just I really loved it. It's kind of like a weird kind of mix between camping and a hotel. And I, there isn't that kind of dread of going through the airport, uh, either on the way there or the way back. Um, so that that was pretty much the travel. Uh, I probably should try and visit family this this coming year. Um, so let's see the in terms of world politics. I'm I'm really bothered by the number of really bad leaders that uh, democratic and theoretically democratic countries uh, have elected or kept this year. Um, it's pretty frustrating. Uh, like you, you just see malformed democracies. And there's also the signs that the United States might be becoming a malformed democracy uh, in the sense that I, I identify with, with a lot of liberal philosophy, at least as I understand it, but I'm not identifying with either the uh, Democratic Party or a lot of liberal activism that I'm seeing, particularly the thing, the anti-free speech kinds of things on the left. But I also certainly don't uh, identify as a conservative. Uh, I don't identify much with conservative philosophy. Um, and, and we're seeing a, a lot of really nasty actors on the right getting a bizarre amount of prominence. And this makes me feel nervous about the state of our democracy. Um, uh, I mean, I, I, as much as Trump seems to be an almost uniquely and bizarrely bad president, I think both, both parties uh, are necessary for the country to function, for the political system to function. And, uh, and when one of them gets ill, the other one gets ill. It's a little bit like, uh, although without so much of an evil and good, it, it's a little bit like a more accurate reading of The Dark Crystal, that old movie from the 70s or 80s, where you had, uh, where you had a, a race that had two parts to it, and they both kind of ref uh, reflected each other as individuals. Um, and... I guess I, I know that there's this tendency for people on one side to see themselves as the good guys and the other as the bad guys, but it's really not the case. Um, and it, it's worrying when you start to see the, the markers of authoritarianism. Uh, I, I guess we're seeing it more on the right now because the conservatives are in power. Uh, but when they, uh, when they're attacking the long-standing relatively neutral institutions of government and talking about purges uh and then on uh on the left there's all this talk of our 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 final victory is imminent and we're about to have a demographic demographic shift that means we'll win elections forever and they're tossing out long cherished notion, notions in our politics um And demeaning neutral principles uh, in the name of the status quo is some kind of a nasty and evil thing. Uh, and th these are not the things that, that smell like a well-functioning uh, democracy with competitive elections and competing philosophies. They, it smells like intractable mess on both sides. And as, as much as there are some far left ideas that I believe in, uh, such as uh, uh, such as uh, socialist economics, I don't want to eliminate the possibility of dissent. And it seems like the culture wars uh, are something that both the left and the right are really keen to win permanently, and essentially making illegal or legally and culturally unviable the expression of ideas that don't go along with their foundations and that's deeply worrying like it, it that would essentially destroy politics as we know it were they to win and and again we're, we're seeing a lot of this kind of stuff continue across the world uh, 
we're, we're seeing things that used to look like democracy uh, in Venezuela, uh, just as one example, or I guess Russia only very briefly looked like a competitive democracy, but the vestiges of, of those uh, were Turkey, they're, they're just mostly gone. They no longer uh, look substantially like a democracy. Uh, they and democracy isn't necessarily an end for its own sake, but uh, but when you see authoritarian uh, authoritarian views come uh, come about with democracy being the uh, the restraint on them and the democracy is tossed aside, you know that really bad governance and excessive control over dissent is about to come. And we can we can imagine what dissent would look like in a uh, in a non democratic system, which would just mean like expressions of ideas that don't fit with the uh, with the dominant views. They're just ignored, and they don't have any path to power, but they're not squashed. And I'm largely fine with that if the governance is good enough. But the problem is usually when you end up having authoritarianism you you have a desire for dignity and you have a desire to squash views that are not that, that don't line up with the views that are in power and so it's not that i necessarily am so concerned with the ability to grab an idea and run with it all the way up to power i'm more concerned with dissent as a form of internal liberty uh sorry for waving my hand like that, uh, one of the problems with being a very warm, a relatively warm place and with it, where outside it's super, super cold weather is that I'm getting some flies inside the apartment and have a zapper that I've been using to, uh, to get rid of them. But uh, it, I don't want to have it in, uh, on in rooms where, the cat, uh, where a cat is. So I have to use it sparingly. And uh, so there's... Anyhow, uh, it just, yeah, th these are things that make me nervous about the state of the world. Um, let's see. So projects, uh, as I mentioned, I'm starting to pull together a new iteration of my blog. I There are things that I like and things that I really don't like about Go. The community feels pretty irritating. Some of the language design choices are incredibly irritating, like the lack of semicolons means that if else blocks have this really inelegant, ugly structure. Um, but there are things to like. It's nice to have good threading support. Uh, it does make me really uh, miss Perl and kind of, in some ways, it, it makes me wish that I had done this in Python instead. But the problem is I already know Python pretty well. There wouldn't be a learning element to it. Uh, to just translate it uh, from Perl to Python. Um, and I suppose I could have just uh, done it in Perl and either done it as is and added the functions that I wanted and trimmed down, like chopped out the bits that no longer felt relevant or just done it anew and reused bits that seemed to make sense. But again, I would have learned a lot less. Um, so yeah, uh, every choice you make it has pluses and minuses. Um, I don't know. Uh, I uh, I think I'm probably going to try and get in better shape because uh, I, I found myself needing to go up to a 36 waistline and that's crossing a comfort boundary that I'm not totally cool with. Uh, the thing is, 30, uh, size 34 pants uh, it, they were getting to be kind of constraining around my waist continually. And that's just a sign that I'm s somewhere between the teeter-totter of how much you eat and how much you exercise. Uh, I The balance has not been in healthy directions. And, I, uh, and some of it's aesthetic because I think being fat is kind of nasty. And also some of it is just health. Uh, so I probably will... Uh, once the weather warms up, I should be trying to get back in shape. We'll need to get some running shoes first because I'm no longer going to be doing barefoot running. Uh, at least partly because, t in theory, that was a big factor into why 
I was having ankle problems earlier in the year. Um, probably should be trying to get back into sketching and drawing and things that are more completely artsy this coming year because I enjoyed doing it in the past just ended up being one of those things I didn't have uh, I decided not to devote time to and there's just things that you can't express unless you have reasonable drawing or sketching skills been trying to pick up uh, language learning uh, this year again using Duolingo um, slacked off a bit for the last few days but in general I've I've enjoyed it uh, I started doing Japanese uh, and really working on my vocabulary and I also very very recently started German uh, anyhow um, I apparently my doorbell just rang and I've probably finished up what I had to say uh, this year anyhow so I'm gonna head out uh, bye bye and maybe see you next year